Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, through your dear Son, you have made us all your witnesses. Enlighten us by your Holy Spirit, all who speak to others the message of salvation through Jesus' blood and merit. Bless all our words, prayers, and actions that through us your saving word may reach out and bear much fruit for the growth of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We rejoice this day as we remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us with the sign of faith. For they were created by God to offer him praise and thanksgiving. God gave them new life through holy baptism, nourished them in the company of his people at his holy table, and in his mercy summoned them to himself, so that they may continue in joyful service to him forever. And so we remember those who have died at St. Paul in the past year. Lois Barnaby, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Dorothy Brooks. And the criminal hanging be there beside Jesus said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Esther Schneider. Jesus told them, Do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Harvey Miski. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Anne Scheel. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord is God, you know. Thunder, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Joanne Woodward. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. He came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Stephanie Sanford. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Shirley Martin. I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. William Berlin. 
For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, Mighty God, in joyful expectation of eternal life with you, we remember those loved ones who have gone before us in faith and now rejoice with that multitude which no man can number, with whom in the Lord Jesus Christ we are one forevermore. We give you thanks for the gift of faith you worked in them and encouraged by their witness, we hold fast to the certainty of your promise of eternal life in your Son, Jesus Christ. hear from God's word, and I invite Phil to share that word with us this morning.
please stand as we hear the words of Jesus. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Matthew chapter 5. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. With all the church on earth and with those who rest in Christ who have gone before us too, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated as we sing.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As we continue our stewardship emphasis, you may remember that last Sunday we talked about the stewardship of self, living on purpose for God, spending every minute of all of our day living to the glory of our God and letting that guide and direct everything that we do and say every day. That's stewardship. Today we add another stewardship, the stewardship of the gospel. Jesus says, be my witnesses. He emphasized that, especially at the end of his ministry, as we saw from the Acts passage, just before he ascends into heaven, he says what? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Just before that, we hear from the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus told his disciples, Go and make disciples. For all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to all, all that I have, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And truly, I'll be with you to the end of the age. And just before that, we are told earlier in Matthew's gospel that when the disciples and Jesus were at table together after his resurrection, Jesus says, go in, well, this is in Mark, excuse me. Jesus says, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. At least three times, before his resurrection or before his ascension and after his resurrection, Jesus makes a point you're going to be my witnesses. But this isn't the first time that they've heard this. Back earlier, prior even to his transfiguration, Jesus sent the twelve out to share the gospel, to go into towns and to tell people that the kingdom of heaven is coming, to tell them about Jesus coming. And shortly after his transfiguration, while he's on the road to Jerusalem, he sends out 72 of his disciples to witness that he is coming. He sends them to all of the towns around there. And it's that 72 I'd like to focus on for a little bit here. Because the instructions he gives those 72 are almost identical to those that he gave to the 12 when he sent them out. So after this, the Lord appointed in Luke 12, 10... After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. So far, text. I chose that section of scripture because that section lets us know that it wasn't just the disciples who were to do witnessing. Jesus gathered out of the 120 that were following him pretty much regularly by this time, he gathered 72 of them, and he said, you go out, you go witness, you go tell that Jesus is coming. And he made them his witnesses. 
Jesus wants us as his followers to be witnesses. Witnesses for him and the love and salvation that he brings about. It's part of our responsibility and our privilege as Christians to be those witnesses. You see, Paul explained it very well in Romans. He says in Romans 10, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. You see, God did an interesting thing. He did a miraculous thing, in my opinion. He brought salvation in Jesus Christ, right? He sent his son who suffered and died to take away our sins, who rose that we may have eternal life. That was God's doing. But how does he get that to people? How does he get that knowledge and that information proclaimed to people so that they can know? He didn't send angels. He sends you and me. Isn't that amazing? Us sinful human beings who have been touched by the Holy Spirit, baptized, into the faith. We are the ones that God says, I'm going to choose you to go share the gospel so that others can believe and have eternal life. You're stewards of this gospel. This good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, this thing that I have done in Christ, now I give to you to share with others. we become the stewards of God's gospel. He entrusts it to us that we may share it so others may believe, so that his kingdom can grow. To live on purpose for God is to understand the stewardship of the gospel that we have that we are called to be his witnesses. And in order to be those witnesses, what, do we, what does that mean? Well, first of all, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You see, Jesus had compassion on people. Right? He cares about them. When he gave these instructions to the disciples, it tells, that we t it tells us when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You see, when Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, he is looking at a world of people, people for whom he would die and rise again. And he cared about them. He loved them. He loved them enough to die for them. And he stands there looking at these people, and his heart aches. They need to know. They need to know about salvation. They need to know about Jesus and what he did. They need to know. And in that compassion, in that desire and love to have people know Jesus, he sends out his disciples. He sends out you and I that we may share that gospel with others 
first and foremost as stewards of the gospel, we have to understand that the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Do you know how few? Do you know how plentiful? The harvest is huge. Think of it in that term. Today we are told that just in the United States of America, in our country, over 50% of the people who live in our country do not claim any type of religion whatsoever. They are what are called nuns, N-O-N-E-S, and duns, D-O-N-E-S. The nuns are people who say, no religion, never did, don't believe, none. They're not people who claim to be a member of a church, but have not set foot in a church in 20 years. They're the ones who say, I have no religion at all. And then there's the duns who've said, I've tried that, and I'm done with it. No thanks. Who at one time claimed to be religious, but no longer. Who've given up on religion altogether. Over half of the United States fits that category. And that's not talking about all of those who are members of congregations who haven't set foot in church in years and years and years. which is normally what, over half of any membership of any congregation? The harvest is huge of those who do not know, who do not believe in Jesus Christ. And the laborers are few. I just received some statistics from the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, just our synod. You know how many congregations are in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod right now? 5,842. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? 571 of those congregations are calling pastors. Just like this congregation. You're one of 571. Now here's the problem. You know how many active pastors there are in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod? Right at 6,000. In other words, barely over one for each congregation. And you want two. St. Lawrence and Frankenmuth, where I was a pastor, they got four. That's bad enough sounding, isn't it? What the Synod is telling us is of those 6,000, they will lose 3,000 in the next 15 years. 15 years from now, the estimate is there will only be half the pastors in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod as there are right now. What does that mean for 5,842 congregations? The harvest is huge. The laborers are few. And that's not even talking about teachers and principals and directors of music and other ministries that we have in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Unless you think we're special, every Christian denomination in the United States has the same problem that the Missouri Synod has. The harvest is huge. The laborers are few. The ministry of the gospel 
you can no longer put in the hands of the professional church workers. It has to be in your hands as God's people because he calls you to be his witnesses. If we're going to tackle this harvest, it's going to take every single one of us to do it. So what do we do? How do we go about this witnessing, this being stewards of the gospel? Jesus says, first of all, pray. Huh? Pray for laborers. There aren't enough. There aren't near enough. Pray for laborers. Pray for people to go into full-time ministry. Pray that the Lord would touch the hearts of people, men and women, to serve him. Look around you. Who would be somebody that you think would be a good pastor or teacher or proclaimer of the gospel? Pray for that person. Pray that God would lead them into that. Talk to them. Give them the idea that maybe God is asking them to be that worker. Pray. Pray earnestly, he says. People are out there dying. That's the issue. Jesus looked at those people. He saw them harassed and helpless without a shepherd, knowing that if they died in that condition, they were going to suffer eternally in hell rather than in heaven. Look around. Pray. And then second, he says, go. Go your way. He sends us out to be those witnesses. Go your way. As you're walking on your way, as you're living your life, go watch for opportunities to proclaim the gospel, to tell people of Jesus. But wait a minute, pastor, wait. Where's the training? I'm not sure I can do this. I haven't been trained to witness. I don't know the theology. What are the do's and don'ts of talking to people? You've got to give me training first. You think the Lord took the time to train the 72? He says, you, 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 go. What, me? He didn't say, come on over here and I'll give you a four-week four training session on being a, a witness. He just says, go, as you live, go. You can do that. The stewardship of yourself as you live for God, as you live to his glory, is a light that you can shine to other people. You have a story to tell. You can tell people what God means to you and how he has helped you in your life. You have that story you can tell people and share with them. You know the gospel. You know that Jesus came as an infant on Christmas, that he grew up, that he lived a life for God. You know that he went around teaching and that he went around healing and performing miracles. You know the story of Jesus' life. You know how he went to the cross. How he suffered and died to take away sins of the world. And how three days later he rose from the dead. You know the gospel. You can share that message with others. Go, Jesus says. On your way, as you live your life, go. This is All Saints Sunday. As we read off those names, did any of them ring a bell for you? Did they show you their faith and their trust and their belief in God? 
Did they help you strengthen your faith? Or maybe it wasn't just one of those. Maybe there's somebody else in your, that was in your life that's now in heaven. That because of them, your faith is stronger. Maybe because of them, you have a faith at all. Now you can be like them, being the people, the saints, whom others can look to and can see. And who knows, maybe someday in heaven, somebody will come up to you and say, because of you, because of your witness, of life or because of your words I'm here in heaven thank you you can be that witness that saint for God but no it's not going to be easy because Jesus says behold I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves we live in a sinful world we live among People controlled by Satan, right? Satan's at work. You think the world and Satan's going to open their arms and say, hey, welcome, we really like you. Not on your life. They're going to make it just as difficult as possible for you to be a witness. It's going to be trouble. It's going to be hard. Expect failures. Expect hostility. But know that God goes with you. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals. Greet no one on the road. Trust God. Not stuff. Trust God. He has promised to give you the words you need. He has promised to take care of you. And you've got eternal life in heaven for goodness sakes. Remember, you share the gospel. God does the saving through that gospel. We walk with God through it all. Be my witnesses, he says. It's what you and I are as Christian people, God's witnesses. Let us be good stewards of the gospel. And who knows, maybe because of you one day, Someone will have eternal life. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, the one who made you his witnesses and the, God, and the one who will use your witness to save others. Amen. Let us rise. It seems kind of, I don't know, out of place or in, in a way to say, we'll now receive an offering for the Lord. But let us remember that that offering also is a witness of our faith 
And it is also what is used to be witnesses and to proclaim that gospel from this place and from all of our church. So we now receive that offering that God's witness of the gospel may go forward. You may be seated. Also remember to sign the, fellow, the, the pads of friendship along the side center aisles. Let us rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things into your keeping. In your righteousness, deliver us from all that would harm the body and assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy, Righteous God, bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we know of your deep love for us, for you have called us your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen families that children may be raised in a way that they should go. Hear the prayers of those who long for families. Sustain all expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, bless all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Give wisdom to our citizens and courage and competence to our leaders. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our rock and fortress in our distress. Remember our prayers for those who are sick, suffering or recovering from injury or illness. We especially remember Nola and Greg, Leo, Beth, Jane, Harry, Bethany, Eric, uh, Virginia, Ken, Shireen, Stephen, Tyler, Patty, Deborah, Emily, Rosemary, Anna, Rachel, Judy, A Andy, Liz, Jane, Martha, Ernest, Larry, Luella, Alexandra, Sally, Jim, Mike, 
Gordon, Mary, Bill, Shirley, Donnie, and Steve. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who are nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him in your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, Eternal Father, though death still claims our mortal bodies, you have raised up Christ that we may pass through death to our own joyful resurrection and to the great reunion with those who have died in Christ and now rest from their labors. Receive our thanks for all the saints and for their witness and hear us on behalf of those who mourn the loss of those they love. Bring us at last to the place of everlasting light and life that we may see you face to face and live in your presence forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for laborers in your harvest. The harvest is huge. Give us a heart of compassion, of care for those who are dying eternally because of unbelief. And Lord, touch the hearts of men and women that ye may become those laborers, those full-time workers in your harvest. But also, Lord, touch our hearts that each of us may see those opportunities around us to share your word, your love, your gospel, that others may hear Make us those beautiful feet into this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gathered in the name of Jesus and in the communion of all saints, a great cloud of witnesses by whom we are encouraged in faith and strengthened by their fellowship, we now prepare to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, a true and lasting promise of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup when he had supped. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and drink. This is his true blood shed for you for the remission of sin. And now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. We rise. Jesus told his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Just a couple of announcements to make. Um, first of all, the uh, discipleship hour after the service, adults downstairs in the fellowship hall and the kids in this preschool hallway as normal. Uh, there will be an elder available for prayer uh, following our service. Uh, then pastor nominations for pastors to be on our next call list are due today in the office. Uh, so you can email a submission to the office at stpaulannarbor.org uh, if you would like to do so. There are forms both online and in, uh, here at the uh, doors. Uh, also today uh, at 5 p.m. at the Chapel of the Holy Trinity at Concordia, they have their Concordia Vespers service, and so you're welcome to join with them there at 5 o'clock. Uh, the Operation Christmas Children or Child Shoe Boxes and the donations are due next Sunday, November 12th. Please make sure that you are, have them here on time for that. And then uh, the Second 50s Christmas Luncheon at Weber's Inn is on December 7th. So that's what, Thursday? Wednesday or Thursday? Some... Hmm? Oh, November. Or December. Boy, I better read these things before I say, announce them, shouldn't I? Wow, okay. So put it on your calendar for December 7th. Don't worry about it this week. Put it on your calendar for December 7th. If I'd have thought about it, it made sense. It would be in December for Christmas and not today, or not this week. Okay. More information is available in the back of your bulletins. You can get it right there, okay? <laughs> Let's join in singing our closing hymn. first. 